Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will show you how can you improve MVC Express framework application development with Curve. My name is Raymond Das. I am senior Action Scripted developer working with Flash from 2001. I also created MVC Express framework. About this presentation, I will quickly tell you what MVC Express framework is what code is, what is my expectations regarding live coding, and I will show you short MVC Express project example and how can you set up, use commands, create mediators and proxies with code. First, let's talk about MVC Express framework. MVC Express is Azure Script Tree architectural framework it's built on proven MVC Express experiences. It has fast and convenient API. It's built around dependency injection. It has very fast messaging system. It has modular programming, uh, module communication and data sharing features. It also supports lazy proxy instantiation and has command pooling. In short, at the moment, it's fastest and simplest MVC-based Action Script Tree framework out there. Now let's see what code is. For that, let's go to their website. We will go to codeorchestra.com. What do we see here? Imagine there is no need to wait for it to be compiled. Here comes the code. See the result just as you called. Feel the new pleasure from Flash and mobile development with code. Wow, that sounds great! Time saver, no restriction, multi-platforming, mobile, teamwork, wow! So after reading this site, you will be hyped about that tool and it will give you a lot of expectations. Sadly, it does not deliver to those expectations. Now, don't get me wrong you still can do live coding with code. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this presentation here. But it's not that good as presented here. Let me tell you what I mean. No need to wait for it to compile. Now, of course, you will wait for compile. But what they mean is that you can compile once and make many updates. First of all, you will compile much longer with code. In fact, sometimes it's faster to compile normally, debug, close, make changes and compile again while waiting for code compile. For instance, I have a huge project with over 100,000 lines that compiles 22 minutes with code. So, if you have a huge project, it's unlikely you will be able to use code. But if you have small project or just want to prototype, code will be okay. Another thing, you will have to recompile with almost every bigger change. For instance, if you create new class, most likely you will have to recompile it. And you will have to recompile more often than you would like to. Saves time. In fact, it wastes so much time initially, and not only because you have to learn new tool. From my experience, for every five scenarios I wanted to use code for, only one worked. So you will waste a lot of time finding out what exactly works and what doesn't. Not reliable, it had bugs. Now don't get me wrong, I am developer and I know bugs happen in application. But if your core feature doesn't work, that means that you don't have QA time and don't have unit test. And that means that you leave testing for your users. And that's not acceptable. No restrictions. In fact, it has a huge list of restrictions. No ability to make classes live on the fly. You can add new class only once. So if you will have to change something or whatever, you will have to recompile. And you have no abilities to add constants. 
multi-platforming. Now, multi-platforming is cool. That's one of the biggest Flash strengths. But you still have to remember that Colt is modifying the compiler and you will have to test with normal compiler. It also works as a magic box. It doesn't always work as Flash would work. Now, every magic box should be intuitive, just work, and if something breaks, magic box should tell exactly what went wrong. Now, Colt fails on all of those cases. So, what Colt can do? Now, as I mentioned before, it compiles with modifying compiler and every class and function marked with live metadata tag will be updated in running application. If function is marked with live code update listener metadata tag, it will be also executed and every asset that's marked with live asset update listener metadata tag will be updated in running application. How that works? So you have your project files, then you compile, call create output Swift file and library of live classes. After that, then you change those classes, call compiles them again, change that library and output Swift file is updated. Let's move to our example. You can find example file in GitHub. You can use Tortoise to Git to get them. Let's start by creating an MVC Express project and compile it with code. To save time, let's start with working MVC Express project. So we have folder for libraries, libs, and folder for source. Uh, in libs, we have two libraries. You can get them from GitHub. MVC Express downloads. We will need two libraries. MVC Express debug, that's for debugging. For release, you will have to use MVC Express release. And we will use MVC Express logger for debugging. Source folder, have our project folder called Express. And it contains folder for constants. For controller, that's application logic. Messages, this will contain MVC Express communication constants. Module for our proxies, data. View for our view and mediators. And then we have our main class and main module. Main class basically instantiates main module and starts it. It also stored into local variable. Main module. Main module extends module core. That a uh, core class on MC Express. In on init, it will execute three function: one to set up controller, model, and one for view. Those commands are basically empty for now, except setup view command which maps main class to main mediator. Main mediator is in view main and it's also currently empty mediator class. In start function we will mediate our main object. And one more thing in our main class we have NBC Express logger in it. So again, this is for debugging. Let's check out our configuration. So we compile main class, output main.svf. We'll output it to bin folder. We'll use flex SDK 491 and we will target 11.4 version. Uh, we will use those two SVT libraries. And we will need compile options. So we will define config debug. This is for debugging. We will keep action script metadata inject and say express uses this a lot. And we will set size. So let's try to compile it.
So here is our application. We see MVC Express logo. It will log everything that happens in MVC Express framework. And we have our trace here. Now let's set up this project and run it with code. Let's create a new project. We will add our source path that's in here. We will add our library path at lips and the C Express logger and MDC Express debug. We will not add any asset paths. In live settings, I like to enable getters and setters to be able to use them live. Everything else is on default. Compile settings. We have to change Flex SDK. Four nine one. We have to point to our main class. We will compile it to cold main and output it to bin folder. We will use eleven dot four and we will not exclude in used code. And we have to add additional compiler options. Now let's compile this. As you see, it takes much more time to compile. And here we go. We have our application running. And we see our first problem. There is no trace. Uh, Cart does not trace simple traces. To overcome this problem, we will have to use external logger application like SauceMax or Monster Debugger or Logmaster 76K. But for simplicity, I will just add live here in main module and this will enable this trace to appear. I want to show you how you could set up MVC Express application on the fly with setup functions. The use of those functions is limited because Colt is limited. In Colt you can't edit live new classes. You can just add them once. But sometimes those functions are useful. Usually setup of your application happens in the setup commands. Setup controller, setup model and setup view. For instance, setup model, you will map your process in this one. Let's create a extra function just for our needs, just for code. I will name it debug life update. I use underscore so that's not a normal function. It's a temporal function just for code. Now we need to add metadata life code update listener. This will force code to run this function every time this function is changed. We also need to add life to class itself. Now, if we will run application and try to change this debug live update function, it will not work. The reason is very simple. The command class in MC Express is temporal class. It is created when needed, executed, and removed. That means that if we change this function, this class will not be in memory anymore and this function will not be called. To fix that, we need to change command to old command. Old command will stay in memory and 
debug live update will be executed when changed. Let's try how it works. Now we have running application and if we try to make a change we see the trace. So live update was called. Let's create and, and add a proxy in this running application. If you go to proxy tab you will see that no proxy is currently a map. Let's create a new folder uh, test and in it we will generate new proxy uh, test proxy now you notice that as soon as I added this class called compiled it in now I can go to setup model command and map this fun this class. Proxy map map new test proxy. Now when I save setup controller command live update is called again, and if we go to our process we see that this class that I just created was added. Sadly this method is not that useful because Colt will not allow me to change this test proxy now. If I want to edit test proxy I will have to add life to it. So this method will work only if you can manage it to create fully your needed classes or your classes are already created and you just need to set it up. Now, very important thing, you should not forget to move this code into execute if you want to use test proxy with next run. The good practice is to change all three commands this way. Now let's create temporal debug commands to execute our application logic in live application and temp message strings. We start by creating debug commands. We will able to modify and execute those commands with keyboard press. First of all let's create a simple command. So let's create it in debug folder of controller. And let's name it debug underscore again. This is debug only classes, so I use this underscore here. Live F1 command. So we have a command. To make it live, we need to add live metadata tag. Now then we change this content of this class called will update it in running application. Now in this class we will not be using code update listener. Instead we will call this command on keyboard press. But first let's hook with this command with message string. This is done in setup. Setup controller we will map a message messages debug live f1 let's quickly create this field And this message will be met with the live 
command. Every time debug live f1 message will be sent, debug live f1 command will be executed. Next step, let's add a keyboard proxy into application. Keyboard proxy will allow us to know which keys we are pressed. Very similarly, how you could do that in ActionScript 2. Also, keyboard proxy will send messages on specified keyboard presses. Let's create a new folder in model. That will be keyboard and I will paste keyboard proxy into it. Let's set it up. We will not set it up keyboard proxy in setup model command because it requires stage. Instead we will create it in start function. Dot stage. Now let's map it. And let's ask keyboard proxy send our debug messages when we press F1. Register message sent on press. So keyboard F1 and message debug. So now every time we press F1, debug message is sent, and then debug message is sent, our debug command is executed. Let's add a quick phrase here. And see how this works. We save we compile it with code. So now, if we click F1, we have the trace showing that F1 is executed. Now let's change it. Code compiles. We go into our application, we click F1, and we see that execute now works differently. It's a good idea to create more than one command like this, 5 or even 10. Also, next, let's create a temporary messages. Now, with code, you can't add constants in live running application. So what I do, I create a temporary constants. Temporary message one and I use those in my live session and then I finish live session I rename those temporary strings into good names now let's see how we can edit mediators and views live to be able to modify our views and mediators, we have to add a function to mediator very similarly how we did with our setup commands. So we have this debug live update function in our setup command and, and we will add it to our mediator. So we have main mediator. We will add it here. This function makes this mediator editable live. And we have to add live to it. Now let's create new mediator 
and make it testable too. And let's make it in live running application. So if you go to mediators, you will see that we currently have one mediator. It is mediating main class view. Now let's create a new mediator. Let's start with the folder. Let's name it test. Now I will create a dummy sprite. Let's name it test2. Now this sprite will draw a rectangle. So let's leave it like that. Now let's create a mediator for it. So we have our test sprite and test mediator. We need to map them with the framework. So we do it here. We save. Now we have test view map to test mediator. Let's now instantly move it to proper place. If we go to visualizer, we see that in fact we still have only one mediator on the stage. Let's fix that. So we go to main mediator again in our debug life update function and let's add it to main. Now let's save it. As you see, we have our rectangle on the stage and test mediator is added. Again, let's instantly remove it in proper place. If we now work to work with test sprite, we need to add a life to it. That means that we will have to recompile. So let's add five to it and let's add debug function to test me data. Same function as we have in main me data. And we mark this class as long. That's it. Let's compile it. So we have our test on the stage. Now let's edit it live. What we want to do, we want to create a message handler for it to react. Uh, let's make a message that will make it more transparent. And let's send alpha to handling function. So, what we want to do, we want to add handler messages dot. Now we will use one of our temporary messages. Now, I will want to have here change test transparency message. Now, I will leave it like that, so next time I will try to compile it, I will get an error. This error will serve me as a reminder that 10 message 1 have to be renamed to this string. Now, uh, handle transparency. 
to create a function. We add parameter that will be a number, and we just make our view transparent. Next step, let's go to our debug function one and let's just send this message. That's it, we are set. Now we can save it all and test it. When I press F1, a temp message soon should be sent. Then test mediator should handle it and run this function. Let's save it. Now we see an error. So this is one of those errors when code doesn't behave like flash normally would. It says that handling function doesn't have a parameter, but we see that it does. If we close application and rerun, error message will not be here anymore. I hope that this will be fixed in the future, but for now you can't add handlers in live application because of this called bug. Okay, so I moved on handler in its proper place. Let's compile it. After compile, we see an error that because I did forget to refactor messages. So, reminder worked. And we will create a new temp message with number one. Let's run it again. So now if I try to press F1, I see an error again. Argument count mismatch. I forgot to send a transparency parameter with F1. Let's fix that. So let's make it like that. We save it. Now let's test it again. And now it works. So this is how you work with mediators. You create this temporary function. Now you can do whatever you want with that. You can go to view. You can change it, you can add functions, and then from mediator, debug live update function, you can change the view, and you can change mediator. And now, the last part, live proxies and data. We work with proxies the same way as we do with mediators. We will use debug live update function that has live code update listener metadata tag. Let's add it to test proxy as example. We also need to make class life. That's it. It's ready to be used in live code. Let's test it. We see our application running. Let's imagine our test proxy has a live data. So it will have current life, total life, and let's imagine this green rectangle is player, and if it will have less life, it will be more transparent. So we will need current life. have to be careful by setting default values because they are set only once. 
but if you make mistake you can use debug life update function to change it let's also make a function to set current life public function set life current life equals life and let's send a message we already have to test me data it will change test transparency Every time life is set, we will send change test transparency message with transparency level. Let's use debug life f2 command to change the life. First of all, we need to get test proxy. We can't use inject. So we will be using proxy map to get proxy to get proxy directly. And we will change life to 20. And this should make it very transparent. We save. Called compiled it. Now let's press F2. When we press F2, the change test transparency with 0.2 cent and we see our rectangle very transparent. Now let's change our data. Let's say we need total life not 100 but 30. So we just go into our life code update listener and we set total life equals 30, we save, code compiles again, I remove temporary code, now if I press F2, we see different result and we have 0 0.6 here. This is how you work with proxies. Currently I use code only as a support application. I can't use it as a main application because compile with code takes longer, because it's not reliable and because it's so limited how you can use with new classes. So usually I just use a main tool to create new classes and set it all up. Then I have to create my already set datas proxies and already set mediators and view, then I compile with code and I work with specific area of my application. And sometimes I use setup functions if I forget to set something up. The way it is, code is far from perfect and it can be used only for specific scenarios and let's hope it will be better in the future. Thank you for your time. I hope this presentation was useful for you. Feel free to ask questions in YouTube comments and in NC Express forum about this. And have fun with Flash!